Well, hello again, everybody. Dan John here from DanJohnUniversity.com. I know it's been a while since I talked about books, but uh, one of the things is that I've been reading a lot of books lately. Uh, I am in a place in my life, and I really appreciate this, where when a new book comes out, people are kind of excited to either send me a copy of the book or ask my opinion about it. And, you know, it's, it's great, except sometimes it, it means I have to do a lot of reading. A couple of books have come out recently, and I, and I want to talk about them. And then what I want to talk about is a much simpler way to get the information from these two books. But let's, I didn't know which way to start, but let's start with, uh, start with Daniel E. Lieberman's Exercise. Now, if you live in Utah or in the Intermountain West, he was just on um, our, our local PBS show called Radio West. Uh, I guess when you're on NPR, you always have to whisper. But it was, it's a good show. He was also on NPR uh, this week talking about the book. And he's an anthropologist, and and, um, and he studies hunter-gatherer societies. Now, this is important because if you go back to the early work of Art Devaney, the economist who became kind of the grandfather of the paleo, the caveman, whatever you want to call it, that, Devaney always pushed back on the notion that he was paleo. He said, no, I eat more like a hunter-gatherer. Well, Lieberman studied hunter-gatherers, and, and, and it, the book is fascinating. Uh, obviously, it connects to McDougall's book, Born to Run, and a whole bunch of other books. But the thing that I like, oh, by the way, the artwork is probably uh, as funny as anything I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's a cover of a, it's a cave painting of a person running on a treadmill. And I just thought that was damn clever. Um, he studied, so Lieberman studies hunter-gatherer tribes, and a whole bunch of other tribes, too. And he picked up some interesting things. First off, uh, hunter-gatherers don't exercise. <laughs> they also sit as much as a typical American, which is which is kind of interesting, because we were all told that sitting's bad for, us, uh, bad for us. But here's the funny thing. is He said the problem with chairs is this thing here, the, the backrest. And if we had chairs without backrest, things would be a lot better. But then I thought to myself, how can I look this comfortable doing a podcast? He talks about that hunter-gatherers sit a lot. Hunter-gatherers don't nap very much. Hunter-gatherers sleep probably about seven, seven and a half hours a night. Not this 12 hours that you sometimes think you need. It is true, however, uh, uh, I did do a famous experiment. Oh, gosh, uh, it was a while ago, but to get ready for weightlifting me, uh, I went up in my sleep from, to 12 or 13 hours a night for a few nights. It worked out at the time because so my daughters were young and my wife was on the road. And so bedtimes was not a big deal. I just lied to them and told them it was bedtime and they all went along with it. I was getting 12 hours a night and I lost about, well, I don't know, uh, 8, 9, 10 pounds in a week by increasing my sleep. Now, here's the problem with that. <laughs> Short, short-term study, one participant, not scientific. But when you read exercise, page after page after page, he kind of dispels the notions about uh, about exercise in general, but more importantly, it's just not something natural that we humans do. In fact, it's probably, it's, it's unique to the last couple hundred years that you would exercise. Now, training for the military, obviously that's been around a lot longer, and uh, you see that in the early roots of physical uh, exercise, physical education being the, 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 the pyramid of military sports and combat. Uh, if you look at men's gymnastics uh, at the Olympics, every single sport is related to uh, fighting on horseback, escape and evasion. Uh, the marching drills that have basically been disappeared, the whole idea of drill, a drill instructor, a drill team, that's all gone. Um, the other area, the other uh, uh, tripod would be sports and games, which has taken over American physical education. And the third one is basic human movement, which I think is not done well. But the, the basics of how you run, how you sprint. Um, I would love to see uh, Tim Anderson's original strength be brought into schools. Uh, the, the basics of proper sprint mechanics, swimming and diving and all kinds of other things to teach the person how to move. And, of course, we've gotten rid of those three pyramids uh, in the last few decades. Exercise, I like a lot. Basically, it says this. 
you're not wired to want to exercise. Someone like myself with the habit, the disease, the, the addiction of training, it's just natural. It's part of what I do. But for everybody else, uh, it's an issue, having said all of that. When you look at the lifestyles of the hunter-gatherer, uh, they, yeah, maybe they walk more than a typical person. But one thing they don't eat, they don't eat industrialized foods. They don't have corn, sugar, wheat, and dairy uh, subsidized by the federal government, making those very inexpensive. Uh, they don't have to deal with scientists who spend their whole life making you want to eat more than just one Lay's potato chip. Uh, there are things at the foods that make you want to eat them. Um, if you ever notice one thing about fast foods, they're very easy to eat. Uh, I love that show called Founder about Ray Kroc and the, the genius behind the early McDonald's with how easy everything was to consume. Um, if you're chasing deer or antelope around, uh, they're, they're not, they don't, the, their packages don't rip open and you get to eat them all you want. Uh, the next book, uh, and this is from my friend Ian Watson. He sent this to me, and I really appreciate it. He also sent me uh, one of David Sivers' new books, which is, one, he's one of my favorite writers now, very insightful young man, uh, both Ian and Derek. Um, it's about by David Sinclair, and the book is called Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. And I like this book a lot. It gives you a lot of foundational information. Uh, it explains to me why... These, I, I've been playing around, and I, I got to be careful about not, you know, making it too esoteric. But uh, I, I have a. It's becoming more popular in the West here in the United States to do intravenous, intravenous uh, supplements. Uh, there's the hangover cure. You'll find that in New Orleans. You'll find that in Las Vegas, and a lot of us who are in the sports side of things are like, wait a second, it's not just for hangovers. What if you added, you know, vitamin C and vitamin B12 and everything else to it? Um, what I like about this book is he talks about the NAD, which is this magical thing which helps you. Okay, I'm already lost. It's chemistry, and I, but it works. What I like in the book is in his conclusion, he talks about what he does. And ever since I got back from the Middle East with my liver issue uh, from the parasite, uh, I, have, I have struggled with certain things. And I've been on this very inexpensive drug called metformin, which is about a about three, four, five cents a day to take. And the benefits for long is are amazing. Uh, and uh, he also recommends vitamin D3, and my wife and I mega dose on that on Monday with a company that we and I'm not going to give you details on any of this because I, I don't I don't support any supplement. But it's very simple stuff, you know, eat plant. Take your, you know, sure, take your metformin, take your vitamin E, okay. But eat plants, eat a variety of plants. Uh, certainly go for a walk now and again. Don't be afraid to get cold. Uh, it's all simple, basic stuff. As much as I love these two books. Uh, by the way, uh, if you're working on your, your press, this is a nice way to start. You can also do goblet squats with that. I still think that Bill Gifford's book, Spring Chicken, has all this information, but in a much, in a much more lovely story. Uh, there's chapters on exercising yourself into shape, and it works. There's articles here, uh, 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 chapters here on Masters Track and Field athletes and how they stay young by staying young with fast twitch muscle fibers. There's all kinds of things here on autophagy or autophagy. Uh, there's cold immersion here. There's a lot of information here that is basically, uh, so this fun read equals these two more academic reads. I am not anti-academic at all, but if you're like me, and sometimes you just need to you know, just tell me what you're trying to say, Bill's book doesn't. Sadly, Bill's website doesn't support this book anymore. And I'm glad I did uh, make copious notes when it was up. And uh, so there you go, folks. Uh, we're in an interesting time in the field of fitness, health, performance, and longevity. 
But we really are starting to get some clarity into longevity and some clarity into high performance. And it's interesting to think that the clearer things are, the simpler things are too. Certainly, get your cold water immersions in when you need. Sauna works too, or sauna works too. Uh, go for a walk now and again, eat your vegetables, <laughs> drink your water, sleep soundly, uh, meditate, uh, read a good book now and again. There's nothing new under the sun. And the simple stuff always works. I hope that helped. I'm Dan John from danjohnuniversity.com and danjohn.org.